also is about just going to grab something from my bag. Funding <laughs> options. Um, uh, the format and, and aimed at creative and technical businesses, uh, digital, digital businesses, uh, but I'm sure there's a mixture of people and I'm sure our esteemed panel will be able to help you with all sorts of things. Um, and for those of you who didn't pick up the news yesterday, Bristol and Bath is the second biggest digital cluster in the UK, only beaten by London. Uh, and we beat Manchester, fantastic. Uh, so this really is the place to uh, start and grow a digital business. Please do come in, take a seat. Um, so I'm gonna give you a uh, bit of context, um, my perspectives on funding, because I think it's important to get some of the basics, which I'm sure you'll all know, but it's always worth um, refreshing. Then I'm gonna introduce our panel, and then there's plenty of uh, time afterwards for Q&A. Uh, also, I'll just flag now, Creative England are out there and they have some grant schemes available, uh, so do catch them. So, uh, I should introduce myself, shouldn't I really? So, my name's Nick Sturge, I run the Set Squared Centre, which is a high-tech, high-growth incubator uh, upstairs, and also Engine Shed, uh, where we're trying to uh, create a crucible of innovation and connect people together and host events like this. Every business is different, but cash is absolutely critical to any business, whether you're a charity, whether you're a trust, whether you're a growth business. And the point I want to make here is that sales, if you have sales, uh, but your income and your profit or surplus and your cash flow are all different. You can have a fantastic sales pipeline and uh, sales, sales revenue coming in with a high margin, you can be creating a profit, but you can still go bust if you don't manage your cash. Okay? You could, you might need to invest in some new equipment, you might have to put six months rent deposit down on a property. Uh, and you just don't have that money in the bank at that time. So uh, just because you're profitable doesn't mean you're safe from uh, going out of, out of business. You can trade too much. Uh, you might not get enough sales. All sorts of reasons why your cash doesn't match what you might be thinking. So one of the first, me the first message has to be keep a close eye on what is happening in your business or enterprise, whatever it is it is so that you can predict before you get a negative point uh, so that you're prepared for it so you need to understand uh, that that's very important and it'll be different for each different business in terms of the kind of the the, 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 the rates but I want you to make sure you make you understand that um, so what we're going to try and do today is find out what the solutions are either for managing your cash flow uh, or getting that investment up front to allow you to deliver uh, the, the, the mission of your business, whatever that might be. Uh, that could be equity, that could be grant funding, and we're going to talk about some of those. It could be loan funding. So all sorts of different ways of funding your business, uh, and we're going to try and cover as many of those as possible. We can't cover all the options with our panel, however good they are, um, so I'm going to list some other ideas but this is just a taster for you to go and uh, explore. What I also want to make you aware of is to understand the cost versus control of finance. It's very easy to think about what is the cost of a loan. Is it 10% interest? Is it 12%? Is it 1,000% if you get it from the wrong place? Um, but different types of funding have different costs in the true sense and, and to me it's a lot about control so um, if we plot I am an engineer so I do this uh, plotting cost versus control you can roughly put different things in different places I've my business I co-founded a business we grew we list on the stock exchange so IPO uh, initial public offering uh, we got a lot of uh, cash we've got raised 21 million pounds in, in total uh, it was high cost, cost us 70 grand every time we wanted to send a report to shareholders and we had 5,000 of them. Uh, 
and we also lost a lot of control. So it's a complete shift in the in the dynamic and, and the way we ran the business. So in terms of cost control, it's kind of the worst. Um, then you've got venture capital, but of course the best by a long way, the best way of funding your business is, is sales. May not be the only way, if we look at back that previous graph, you may need some, some funding to get you through some, some um, uh, uh, gaps, if you like. Um, but revenue, that's how you keep best control and it should cost the less, the least in your business. And then you've got a whole load of other things. We're gonna cover various crowdfunding options, which I've put in green there, um, uh, which are kind of the new kids on the block. But there are all sorts of, way of ways of funding your business. Overdraft, loan, and we might cover the kind of difference between them. It's not impossible to get your customer to help finance growth. So in my business, we were making a technology product. We established a, a, a reseller agreement uh, with a, uh, another party. We managed to negotiate that they paid royalties for the, the, the technology we were, we were providing them with in advance. So they actually gave us the cash up front on their predictions. Fortunately, they or perhaps not fortunately, but, but they didn't deliver on their projections. So we got the money even though they didn't sell them, which was, uh, which was nice. Um, so customer finance is a possibility, as is supplier financing. It may be if you're developing a product and you go to a manufacturer, they want your business, they may help fund the supply of your businesses to get so that they get the business. If they believe in your business, it's possible to get them to help with your cash flow. So that's not impossible. Um, grants, we're going to cover grants, lots of different types. Some grants will, a very light touch, you know, very easy. You fill in a one pager, you get the money, and that's the end of it. Others, you have to keep the records for 25 years or something. Um, you have to report on every spend. Etc. Etc. So different grants can involve different amounts of loss of control. Uh, point is, there's a spectrum. Lots of different ways of financing your business, uh, but think about the costs, and it's not just the upfront or uh, listed cost of, of, of borrowing money, for example. It's about the control. Lots of other um, uh, sources that we're not going to cover. There's a very useful website called the UK Crowdfunding Association uh, website which lists a whole load of stuff. Um, Bristol City Council has some broadband, broadband vouchers. Um, there's a new thing on the block which is quite interesting which I'll plug for a moment. Uh, if, and this won't apply to all of you, if you've built up uh, some wealth in your business and perhaps you're putting it into a personal pension well, there are ways now to lend that money back legally, back to the business, and perhaps back to, based on your IP. It has to be a commercial transaction, but there are experts in that field. Clifton Asset Management in Bristol do this. It allows you to get working capital to fund the growth of your business. It's not equity investment, it has to be loan, uh, but uh, it can be back to based on the IP in your business. So that can be really beneficial. It has to be at market rate, interest rates, but actually you're paying interest into your pension fund. So it's kind of win-win. Uh, sounds dodgy, uh, it's not. Um, so that's maybe worth looking at. There's some specific grants that come out. There are various bulletins you can sign up to that get you a notification of, of, of grants. Um, uh, we're gonna cover crowdfunding in a minute. Equity investment, lots of different sources of equity uh, investment. Swain is the local investor network. We're running some Silicon Gorge Investor Showcase events. We're going to hear from Cedars, Crowdcube, AngelList. Um, anyone know what FFF is? Friends, Family, Fools. That early, early cash in your business, uh, uh, a good source of finance can be those people you know, whether it's your aunt, whether it's your brother, whether it's your mate in the pub, uh, comes with risks. And the big one is just, well, first, first of all, you can fall out with, if, you, if, the, if the investment goes pear-shaped, is that gonna damage your relationship? But perhaps the subtler one is just because they've invested in you, just because Jane in the pub has invested in your business, that isn't necessarily a validation of your idea. They may just be shutting you up or being nice to you, okay? So they come back, it does come with a health warning. 
So lots of forms of finance, and what we're going to do today is uh, to hear a couple of minutes from our panel, uh, and I hope I've got everybody there right, um, uh, and then an opportunity for questions until uh, half past 11. So uh, I'm going to do this in this order rather than what's on the list. So Andy, do you want to talk about your experience? Certainly. So I, I'd add to this um, not just angel investing, but venture capital investing. So Bright Pearls are a cloud platform used by retailers to manage all their business data in the cloud and synchronize inventory, i.e. what they have in their stores and their warehouses on and offline. And we've raised $26 million through venture. Uh, that includes $2 million through angels that we did in our last round. And I'd add on to that as well, we've also uh, raised a lot of money from our employees and also nearly a million pounds in addition from suppliers. So lots of different, lots of different avenues. Okay, Derek. Um, thanks. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm from co-founder of Fundsurfer, which is a crowdfunding platform based here in Bristol. And actually we work upstairs in the Set Squared um, Business Acceleration Center, which is great. Um, so we're a funding platform for... Do you want to hold, hold the mic a bit closer? Yeah, everyone hear me okay? We're a yeah. um, funding platform for creative, social and green projects and um, we used to call ourselves a crowdfunding platform but based on conversations with the hundreds of people and businesses that we've talked to uh, the number one problem is getting sustainable funding uh, whether that's through crowdfunding or you know loans um, that kind of thing um, and crowdfunding seems to be uh, you know, a bit of a silver bullet to solve the fact that you know, maybe the banks aren't lending or the arts council grant got cut or your Bristol Council, you know, you don't get money from them anymore. Um, but we find a lot of people want to use crowdfunding, but don't necessarily have the best way to go about that. So we help them kind of manage that that, that territory, um, and we um, kind of put together a sustainable uh, strategy for them. So whether that's just crowdfunding, or whether it's a startup loan, peer-to-peer -peer loan. And um, Nick mentioned the pension-led funding. We you know, partnered with the Clifton Asset Management people offer that too um, and so the thing to keep in mind is there are more than 100 crowdfunding platforms in the UK alone there are thousands in the world and you have to decide which one you're going to go to um, and then that comes down to the niche that you're in it comes down to the features that they offer um, the funding models too whether that's all or nothing so if you say you want to raise £10,000 if you don't raise that in your time frame you don't get anything um, another model is um, keep it all. So if you raise £9,000 after that, you get to go away with that. And those models are kind of equally split among the crowdfunding platforms in the UK. Um, so, yeah, we'll kind of help you develop that strategy and um, you know, hopefully we can answer some questions about crowdfunding. Thanks. Thanks, Derek. Nick. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Nick Appleyard. So I'm from Innovate UK. Uh, some of you might know it's Technology Strategy Board, but we changed our name. Uh, I run the digital economy and creative industries programs there. So uh, they, these are largely grant funding schemes, or sometimes it's, it's contracts, uh, procurement contracts. But it's all about innovation in your business uh, and innovation in your products. Um, so, so supporting you on the route towards market, uh, getting your products and your services ready. Uh, that's that ranges from the, the small end, kind of five thousand pounds for an innovation voucher, which will allow you to reach out to somebody who's got uh, some expertise you need and bring that in. That might be in a university, or it might be a technical specialist of some kind. Um, <clears throat> up through uh, the kind of uh, thirty, twenty, thirty, forty thousand pound project funding. Um, uh, uh, to, to do your initial kind of prototyping and get yourself going, right up through to half a million pound big collaborative projects with, with industry leaders or you know, 20 million pound to build a jet engine. Um, so uh, uh, one of the, uh, there, there are kind of two, two forms of this. One is it, it's your idea which you bring to us and we just assess it on its merits and the business potential that that has in the innovation case. Um, and, and uh, a lot of the, the, the kind of the responsive schemes like smart awards and innovation vouchers work on, on that uh, on that basis and there are others where we ask a question of the of the community we say look is there anybody out there who can solve this problem because if so you will solve an industry need you'll solve a need of these clients that we've, we've made a partnership with 
Um, so, so, so there, there, there are two two kind of ways of engaging. One, one is one is something which is which is led by your own uh, uh, creative ideas, and one is where we're actually asking for uh, for a response. So, schemes around all of those kind of things, and I'll unpack them a bit more later. Is it? Hi, hi everyone. Um, my, my name's Tom. I work for a company called Cedars. So, uh, Cedars is a, an equity crowdfunding platform. So, similar to uh, Derek and Funds Zephyr, we allow you to to raise raise money from your friends, family, uh, networks, and anyone anyone in the crowd. Um, but we we differ in that in return for that we we um, you you offer a share in your business um, in return for the funds. Um, and so, you if you work with us, you can raise anything from twenty five thousand pounds all the way up to to four million, which is which is our range. But we typically tend to focus on the, the earlier stage businesses that are uh, either pre-revenue or um, early revenue um, that are looking for their first day, first uh, first round of funding. Um, and on average, we're we're raising around one hundred fifty thousand um, for, for companies in return. Uh, sorry, from about uh, one hundred eighty investors. Um, so we, we basically offer the, the platform for you to display your, your business on. Um, we offer support and, and advice through the process. Um, and uh, we also do all of the paperwork for you to, um, to close the deal, so the, the legal and the tax and then the boring stuff. Um, so um, I think I'll just, just finally um, give a couple of reasons why you might want to consider this, this route of financing. So um, equity, equity crowdfunding has few really really great things that it, that it offers in in terms of um, what you get out of it as from an, as an entre from an entre entrepreneur's perspective um, so firstly you get um, you get kind of validation from, from the crowd and you get feedback and you get comments about what they think about your idea so a bit like Nick's example of, of Jane in the pub giving you validation might not give you validation if you have 200 people who are supporting it that gives you a little bit more um, and secondly you get a you get a community of people who uh, shareholders in your business, and they'll then be your your first users, your uh, brand ambassadors, um, and your advisors going forward. And just finally, of course, you, you get the funds. Um, so that's that's basically it in summary. Thanks. Stop. Hold on. Can you hear me? What's up? Can you hear him? Yeah. Yeah. I'm Andy. I run a company called Deleb. Um, we're about 14 years old. We have. A strategy for funding over those 14 years which you could call tactical savvy you could call it a haphazard mess um, I've done so many different kinds of funding um, Nick probably wants me to talk about debt crowdfunding today it's probably off topic but I think something that's not considered enough is why you need the funding what you're going to do with the funding the psychological effect of that on you the founder or the person running the business what problems funding can introduce to your business I don't know if we're going to cover things like that, Nick, but there's a lot of focus on the means and the assumption that, of course, you just need to get the money. The money is very hard to get, and you will have to write a lovely plan to get the money, but then that plan runs up hard against reality. And I think um, that I've got some recent thoughts on that, having loaded the company up with debt. Uh, so I'd like to talk about that if I can. We'll, we'll see what questions arise. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you, panel, for your introductions. Um, it's now open floor. Uh, so has anyone got any questions? Is there anybody? One at a time? Are all of you based in Bristol? Hands up who's based in Bristol. I live in Portishead, does that count? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're not, we're but based in London. Our office is in Swindon. Yeah. T HQ Bristol, two years San Francisco with an office, office and a house there. Tom, what's the average um, equity that you expect to find to give away? Very, yeah, very difficult question. <laughs> um, it, it depends hugely on a lot of a lot of factors. It's probably the hardest decision you have to make. Oh, sorry, um, <laughs> depends on a lot, a lot of uh, a lot of different factors, and uh, it's a very, very difficult decision which we tend to leave up to the entrepreneur to make. Um, but as a very, very ballpark figure. The, the sort of the average valuation is, is less than a million. It's probably about seven hundred thousand pounds, which means that if you're raising one hundred and fifty, that's about sort of ten percent of your of your business getting the ten fifty. Um, so yeah, it varies though between about five and thirty percent. Can I ask something like a question? Go on then. Well, just just a quick one, Tom. I mean, a lot of these uh, fund surfers and seeders all seem to have. You have to either be inventing a game 
or yeah. making a funny little widget or something. But if you, unless you have the IP in something, no one ever seems interested in funding them. Just from my looking through these sites. Uh, yeah, I think that's pr probably true. And I, I think we're a bit different to some of the others. So a lot of the rewards based uh, platforms tend to have more uh, more creative products, Kickstarter and Indiegogo in particular, the, the, the big ones. Um, they kind of they grew out of um, out of a kind of mission to fund creative projects specifically and specifically within the, the kind of music and arts industries and um, also a lot of the techie stuff kind of grew on top of that. Um, so we do have a, a lot of those types of projects and oh, sorry those types of business um, that are sort of kind of creative and, and have a bit of IP, but um, there's there's a huge variety. The majority are, that we fund are tech businesses, but um, we fund businesses from virtually every every different sector, from um, consumer goods to tech to arts and performance. Um, so there's there's really a, a sort of huge variety. But in terms of uh, IP and whether you if you're worried about giving away um, information about your business, then um, there is it is there is a very public aspect to crowdfunding. So. Uh, anything that you see, all your competitors, uh, sorry, anything you write, all your competitors will be able to see um, and, re and read about. So there's not really much you can do to, um, to protect it other than not, not saying what, not what you don't want to tell them. Um. Can, I, can I chip in? Yeah. I always find it more helpful to think of selling the equity. It's off, we say. Can you the mic up, Andy? Sorry, can you hear that? As founders, we all talk about giving away the equity. But if your business isn't worth anything, anything you're, you're giving away nothing. It's a transaction. You sell the equity and you sell it at the price you're comfortable with. I don't talk corporate finance people very often because I don't like them, but the ones I have dealt with, there are some good ones in Bristol. And it, it's a transaction. We don't give away anything. Your business isn't worth anything. You're not giving anything away. There's no loss to you. Somebody else, whether it's a large corporate finance house or a fund, or whether it's an individual angel, are giving you with no guarantee of any return a huge amount of their money. That's not giving away. They're giving you the money. It's a transaction. It, it's a semantic point, but it, I think it helps to change the attitude. I, th I think there's, there's another thing to add, is, is that increasingly investors are recognising that it's best to have something different, whether that is formally protected or not, but it's about execution. Actually, there are lots of things which are doing similar things. It's about execution. Have you got the team? that can execute to deliver the value. So yes, you need to have something different, but it's as much about how you deal with it. Do you think that's that's right? Yeah, I completely agree with that. Mm. There's a question down here, I think. I think you're... Can you speak up? <coughs> speak up, not speak up. Easily. Um, I've got two people with me, but they're on my phone, one in Romania and one up the road in Bristol. And we're putting an innovation together around eye beacons and helping the blind, does that qualify for grant, grant funding of any sort? Yeah, potentially. Um, anything which has got a good business case attached to it, um, so which is likely to lead to a profitable business, uh, is, is the, the, the kind of stuff which is in scope of Innovate UK. So as long as you, the, the first question always that we ask is, who is your customer going to be? Um, and blind. If, Blind people, fine. So good. Either what are they willing to pay? How many of them are there? How big is that market going to be? What's your um, chance of being able to get uh, a, a good uh, a purchase on that marketplace and, and get a share of that? If you can answer all of those kind of questions, as well as having a good project plan for how you're going to get there, yeah. then yes, absolutely. They, we we will support things right across the range of applications. Um, the accessibility um, area is particularly an interesting one um, in the digital economy because so many services are offered for the mainstream or even for the early adopters. Um, because you know, generally, the, the, the people who are developing web services, digital services and so on, tend to be from a particular demographic uh, and don't necessarily um, uh, ex ex extend the thinking to, to, towards the, the, the entire spectrum of the population. But if you want the entire spectrum of the population to benefit from the digital economy, you have got to make sure that you are reaching all of the, the, the corners of the marketplace. So from, from the kind of public interest point of view that the, the, the public funding serves, we are particularly interested in people who do go into, in, into all of those corners of the marketplace. Yeah. How do I find you after today? Uh, either look for that on Google, Innovate UK, or uh, Twitter, Nick, Nick underscore Affiliate. I have cards. 
We can do that. We can, we've got half an hour afterwards. <laughs> we, we can, can do, do that. that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Go. On. What do they look for and how do you prepare to get investment? From who, who are you considering approaching for investment? No idea. VCs, angels? We've got a long list and yeah, need to go through that process. Assuming VCs, angels, what kind of business do you run? Is it a product based technology business? Yeah. Is it a physical product or a digital product? Software. Software, okay, great. Well, that, that's good because there's a long list of those. What do they look for? My pitch would have. Um, four things in it, um, but I've got a really great team. You know, we're the guys and girls who are going to make this one thing the best in the world and beat everyone else at it. Second thing is that there's a lot of people out there who are going to buy this. Currently, they've got a big challenge, a big problem. They're hitting the head again with concrete wall. There's no option. They're using a piece of software acquired by IBM that was developed in the 60s and you're going to open the door and we're going to flock through. So this is a huge number of buyers um, that, you, that you can acquire, and they've got a, a real tangible need. And actually, this is where the storytelling comes in. Make this need really apparent, so that as soon as your product's released, you're all going to come in. Um, third thing is, um, third out of four, really great advisors. So it's not just you acting in isolation in Bristol. But actually, you started to engage uh, people from the industry, experts who've done this before. So when you're pitching the VC, they can see that you're not crackers because the, the, the company that, that, that currently could be winning, the incumbent, or, uh, you know, or people who are already disrupting that person, that company, are interested in joining you. So great advisors. And finally, uh, fourth thing, I think the most important thing, the only thing that uh, you know, your whole future success is determined on is customers and revenue. So show, show them that you've got customers, you've got revenue, and you know, the advisors were right, your team's right, you're right about the market because the market's coming to you. So if you do that, you know, you, you, you've got a good chance, I'd say. Mm. Any, any, yeah. Andy? Do I go and ask Nick this question last year because I'm so bored of running around doing debt funding, and I thought maybe it's time for my business to go and look for equity funding. We're at a point where it'd be appropriate. I came and asked Nick, and Nick said, "Right, well, so what should we be doing for investor readiness? What do I need to do to present my business attractively to investors?" And Nick said, "Have a successful business." Sounds glib, but I've been testing that assumption on potential investors. We're a small, we're a sub-million kind of range in terms of tech investment. That's tiny, but I've been out testing that assumption on potential investors. I say, what are you looking for? And they say, a successful business. It's really glib, but there's no, there's no way to hide from that. They want to see revenue. They want to see a good P&L because we're quite a small investment that doesn't have a massive growth potential. So they want to see profit loss. They want to see it's UK investors. They're conservative. They're savvy. This is not Silicon Valley. They want to see a successful business that they can put their money into and get out a return quite quickly or quite stably and reliably. And that's my current experience of talking to people who may actually have money to put in my business at that relatively small end. And yeah, it's not an easy one to achieve. Nick? Yeah, you, you'll have a limited amount of time to put your idea across to a potential investor, regardless of what the format of that is, whether it's written or verbal or you know, some pitch session or whatever. Um, so you've got to be succinct about this and you've got to tell them the things that they want to know. So you've got to get into the heads of whoever it is that you're asking money for. And not, uh, we, we see a lot of people who kind of pitch their ideas uh, and talk about what they're enthusiastic about and what, what motivates them. And that, the passion comes across there. But actually, they, they only talk about the idea. They don't talk about the market, how that's going to come up in return. Uh, they don't talk about the customers. They don't talk about their, their credibility to be able to deliver a plan and things like that. You've got to get all of that stuff across because that's the stuff that an investor is listening for as much as how exciting your piece of technology is. And that, that's, that's there, of course, that's the foundation of the argument. But if that's the only thing you talk about, then, then your investor is left kind of wondering uh, what it is that you're asking them to invest in. Um, and not all investors are the same. Right? They don't all have the same motivations. So know who you're talking to. Do you want to come back on this? Um, any, any 
Yeah, well, I think that's it. Um, so you've covered sort of key things to um, uh, that, that might appeal for them. Apart from the business plans, the financials, the obvious things, is there anything else? And I think maybe you mentioned good advisors on the board level, perhaps. Is there anything else you should have ready uh, yeah, to, to make your business ready for investment? So there's, there's a lot, actually, that you need to do to get, get ready for investment. It's, it's a long process, six to nine months of, of almost full-time work. So we're not going to scratch the surface here. Um, another thing, so, so what I recommend and what I did um, was, was get good advisors to help me through this process. And the best one is stood right, right here <laughs> that I ever met, followed by uh, you know, a few of the guys, a couple of the guys in this building, Mike Jackson, Grev, and spent a huge amount of time with Grev, at least once a month for multiple hours to prepare for funding. And he was very helpful, you know, as I've been running business for, for two years, but I had no I, I, when someone said a VC, I thought it meant a Victoria Cross. I was gonna meet a really brave soldier, not an investor. So he, he kind of nurtured me from zero to something that wasn't utterly useless. And uh, it was challenging and got us ready and, you know, we succeeded. But the whole process of the whole process is, is complicated, and um, when you get into what are what are ter what are good terms, what are bad terms, what are good valuation, bad, um, and the negotiation, it's fierce. And without people like Nick, who you know, been this isn't his first radio like mine. He's been around the block many times. He can, um, you know, they can really help you through this. I remember, I don't know if you remember this, Nick, but it was about 11 p.m. one night. I got a counter offer, or uh, uh, we were mid negotiation for a million quid seed. And uh, I just didn't know what to do with it. And uh, so I phoned him or texted him and he was free and he called me straight back. So having, having access to these kind of, these kind of, this kind of experience, it's a difference for us between winning and, and not. And if we didn't get that investment, I don't think we'd have a company today. So I'd say get someone to support you because it's a big, big topic. So I, I think that, that thanks for the plugs, uh, Andy. Um, but, but it's absolutely critical to have people around you. So those of you who came on the, the session, first session this morning uh, in the boardroom about board, it's about having uh, good uh, colleagues at board level. Not You still need great people doing the work in your business, but having support at board level that you can share the challenges, the difficult decisions, get the moral support uh, from. Uh, it's kind of one of the things that an incubator provides, but, but if you're not, not in an incubator, then uh, having a good board and critically, I think, uh, an effective chairman, to, chairperson to help you through uh, that, that process. Good. Thank you for that. Mark. You explained lots of different ways to get money. Can you perhaps put a bit of insight of which ones you took and how you made that decision in different options? Yeah. Who is that addressed to? Just, just quickly then, I'll, um, so for two years, we didn't raise any money. Um, I, we were working full time, my co-founder and I, and we would moonlight at the weekends and go to expos, and, you know, having spent money, four grand on a stand, 500 quid on posters, to pretty much pretend we had a business. We had software, it wasn't finished, um, and through those expos, we got, we got people interested in, in buying the software. Uh, we didn't have a contract, we got a contract, we got them to sign, and those customers you know, had faith in us, our abilities, what they saw of the software, that it was good enough, and it wasn't perfect, but good enough, that it was gonna deliver value to their business and they were gonna pay us. So, um, the point is, those customers are key, um, and they, they, we basically got them on board, and you know, we got to about third half, third half a million quid in revenue after two years. We, we weren't, you know, I didn't take a salary in that time, so it was very hard. Uh, lost, lost my house, given a boat, had to live in the harbour when it froze, and there's a whole load of stories about that. But everything went into it. I managed to borrow 20 grand of the bank. But when the investments arrived, I think we had 30 quid left in the bank, and the tax man was about to shut us down. So, you know, d d depend on customers, but not, we took it too far. Um, but they really did help at that point to go to raise some capital. And the P&L wasn't pretty. But we had enough data to convince, to validate what we're doing, to convince investors, and we went straight to a VC because um, uh, just accidentally, really, we, we bumped into them, and um, we they they we started talking about what VCs do. We realised we could probably get up to about up to a million pounds, maybe a third of a million. Um, we went to look at, at angels and saw there's a much lower sum there 
and actually we, we figured the effort is going to be not, not that dissimilar, so we thought we'd go for the bigger, the bigger check. Um, so I, I, I really recommend that, uh, that VC. I mean, it comes with a lot of downsides you know, that, that cut against maybe your entrepreneurial spirit that they want to drive for revenue and growth, and perhaps you want slightly kind of less aggressive growth and more quality in other parts of the business. I'll finish in a second. Um, but uh, they do have deep pockets. They can follow on and support you. If you pick the right ones, you know, they really buy into your business. They have lots of experience and can help you grow. And um, so I do recommend looking for if not for VCs early on, um, uh, look for angels that can take you to VCs. And this is the downside of crowdfunding, because you may, may raise a few hundred K through crowdfunding, but there's nobody in your business supporting and helping you grow. Most importantly, when you're down to 100 K, like half it's gone, you need to write, start thinking about raising more money and you have no one to go to to cut a check. Uh, so I strongly recommend looking at the, um, you know, every source of funding has its place, but I strongly recommend considering angels uh, or early stage VCs. And if you're in SaaS, like this gentleman is, there are actually lots in the round uh, around the UK. So uh, what Andy's highlighted there is it's a complex environment. There are lots of different options and, and people have lots of different experience, different funding. So I need to give Tom and Derek the opportunity to come back yeah. on that particular <laughs> comment about crowdfunding. Uh, so it, crowdfunding is the new kid on the block. Um, let's pick up a bit on what Mark talked about, the decision making, guidance on what is the right form of finance. Derek, you, you, you have a kind of a supermarket type approach. Yeah, um, so we all, uh, we'll help you de uh, decide based on what your, you know, what your goals are. Um, we don't currently do equity crowdfunding at the moment, so when people come to us wanting that, we do kind of refer them on to people like Cedars and Crowdcube. Um, but other kinds of funding that will supplement that we, you know, we, can, we can help you find. So whether that's kind of loans to bridge the gap um, or just uh, doing a crowdfund, rewarding an agent crowdfund to raise a little bit of capital first when you decide whether your you know, product is going to fit the market and get a bit of validation before you actually go to get VC. Um, just from a, kind of per, you know, a company point of view, we're on that journey at the moment, um, you know, trying to you know, get into investor readiness and doing that. So. <laughs> Tom, so, so that, that issue of, of, of support once you've got, got some money, um, is that the end of it from your point of view? Um, so we're, we're, it's, it's, a, it's a bit different um, from angel and VC funding as, as you've highlighted and in terms of the support going forward, a lot of them won't give any support at all, um, but you may find that you have one or two who you would never have met before who happen to be, um, you know, have a particular experience in the industry and then they will support you. Um, so um, although the vast majority won't offer any support, um, it can it can often be the case that you have one or two, um, particularly lar the larger investments coming in that are from um, angels that either you've met through contacts from your crowdfunding efforts or uh, that have just been, you've just, they've just encountered your business through, through, our, through our platform. Um, so one example I always like to give is um, we, we raise money for a, uh, a cheese making business in Northern Ireland um, and he makes blue cheese. Um, and this uh, guy from uh, one of the largest che uh, cheese manufacturers of Red Leicester found his business on our site um, and he got in touch, he invested 10 grand um, and he said, I love this guy, this is the future of the cheese making industry, I want to be part of it, I want to, get, I want to you know, mentor him going forward. Um, so I wouldn't discount it completely from being um, a sort of a benefit, but obviously it, it's it's not the, the main reason for doing it. So I, th I think there's a th there's there's a, there's a thread there about about people. You know, Andy Andy talked about the, the equity investment being um, a, a transaction. These these things are transactions, whether it's with the bank, whether it's with Innovate UK, whether it's with um, an angel or VC. But the personal relationship is still absolutely critical. The relationship with an angel, the relationship with a VC, the relationship with a bank, does that exist? Um, but, but one of the exciting things, and I think perhaps unknown with crowdfunding, is that it's also brokering a broader social network. When we listed our, we, we, um, our first fundraising uh, in, in my business was listing on the stock exchange and we suddenly 
uh, went from uh, seven mm -hmm. shareholders to about 2,000 in one go. Uh, completely changed the dynamic. And so we couldn't really, we did have quite a, a lot of relationships with a number of different shareholders. But when you've got one investor, uh, be, they, be they angel, i.e. an individual, uh, who may or may not have relevant experience, sometimes they think they've got good experience, but perhaps they haven't. Um, uh, and a VC, more of a, a, a professional investor, the relationship you have and the trust you have with them is absolutely critical because sometimes most of the time, plan A doesn't quite go the way you expected, and you need sometimes you need a bit of slack. And the trust that you've built up with your investors is that the case, Andy? The trust you've built up with your investors allows you to that slack. If you've got no trust, as soon as something goes wrong, so the example that Tom gave of uh, an investor coming through that crowdfunding site, finding them, and then actually developing a relationship off the back of that. Well, that's great, and, and that, that will probably create something that, 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 that stands longer. So understanding the interests of your investor or investors, I think, is, is critical. Can, can just, just to supplement that very quickly, is, you know, it's worth sacrificing a few dilution points to get the right investor, and do that by assessing you know, what, what their interests are. You know, they'll do due diligence on you, do it to them. Lots of people will know them, so you're going to ask lots of questions. What are they like? What kind of questions do they ask? How often do they ask questions? How long did it take to close the fund? What was the negotiation like? How did they treat? How do they treat you? What were they like in a follow-on situation? Look at when they raised their fund from institutional investors. And always, I set up Google searches for their new funds being emerged, particularly from new VCs, because you'll have a few individuals that never worked together sat on. A big pot of money that they've got to get rid of and so you know they'll be more keen to, to get rid of that in the early <coughs> stage of that fund so it's a little tips in how to find these things okay thanks andy any more questions yeah Derek, you probably want to do reward and donation crowdfunding uh, to raise the money, uh, but then you can also find business mentors, um, people in Bristol like Outset or Red, um, who can do the do the mentoring for you. Um, if you if you do take a startup loan, because then mentoring is part of that, in order to you know. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Well, if you, as part of your as part of your kind of crowdfunding campaign, you can be open and, and ask people to you know uh, get in touch. You can help that way. I mean, part of the reason that people are uh, giving to your project is because they want to back you as a person as well as just whatever product or service that you're uh, trying to raise the money for. So it can be that you know that you can work together in those situations. Andy. If it's just cash, you want, you're a one-man band, and you just want to buy a new Mac or a video camera or whatever it is, 0% credit cards with a 10 grand limit. <laughs> <laughs> Any loan you get, you're going to have to personally guarantee it that size, unless it's a grant. There are grants around, but 0% credit cards with a 10 grand limit, that's how we started it. Nick? 13 years ago. Do you have a comment on that? Um, yeah, there are grants around. They're generally they're tied to, to particular kinds of activity. There are also loans available from, uh, from a bunch of people, including from government. Um, so yeah, it depends what you're doing. Depends what you need the money for. You say you're growing. Yeah. That's that's you know that that always cheers up anybody who's yeah. like <laughs> thinking about giving you money because they, 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 they can follow that trajectory forward and see a fair chance of getting it back. Um, but one thing, kind of general comment around this is um, forecast your cash flow. Um, because you'll, you'll be, you, know, you have a backdrop of a line which is heading down all the time because you're spending money, you know, if, if people need to be paid, equipment needs to be bought and all the rest of it. Um, the timing of when money comes in is always important. So how long is it actually going to take to get the money and are you going to run out of your own um, bank balance before that happens? Um, some things, you know, a, a VC deal is likely to take longer to secure than uh, a bank loan. Um, uh, some of the grant funding things pay in arrears. 
you do the work first and then you get paid. Well, are you going to be able to manage your cash flow through, through those kind of things? So you need to be a little bit kind of cognizant and a bit cautious about just not, not all money is equally good and, and equally a good fit to what you're trying to do. So you, you need to always have a good kind of forward view about where you're, where you're going to be six months from now, a year from now. Okay, thanks. And uh, just uh, my little addition is, is in terms of getting support, uh, my personal view it's never too early to have a board. Uh, um, we, we talked about that earlier. Um, but network, build your network, get out of your immediate um, zone of friends, if you like, and meet new people because you'll find support and informal mentoring. Socialising your ideas can be immensely valuable and you, and, and you can get a lot of that for free. There's a Oh, yeah, I was, um, I was wondering how you get access to these VCs, you know, when, and you know, the best way to approach them and, and where they are. You know, I see things like Apple has 800 or 180 million in its current account, you know, billion, billion sorry. So uh, how, how can we open that and, you know... What, what's your business? I'm um, a small uh, film company and um, uh, media production, yeah. So I'm B2B SaaS, so web-based software, so how I approach this is to look at who invests in B2B SaaS companies. Um, so the ecosystem of uh, uh, institutional money it kind of shrinks down to those who were focused on that. Some of those are focused on investors, Notion, the capital um, guys in Cheltenham. They only invest in B2B SaaS at this stage. So there'll be in your industry a set of investors who are looking to put money, in fact, they've got funds they have to put to work in a certain time frame. So they've got to get rid of this cash. Um, so I'd, I'd be doing that research and who's that list? Um, myself and Google, but also I'd be asking other people and um, looking for mentors. So back to this advisor point I made earlier, which company do you most want to be like? Um, and then how do we get into the executives, the founders, the board of that company and have a conversation? And I was reading an email that the, a 20, 20 year old who went through Y Combinator, which is a competition for early stage startups in the States, he wrote to the chairman of um, American Express and he opened it and replied. Uh, so you know, the people do want to help um, if you can appeal to them in the right way. Um, you might not be able to get an answer from him, uh, but there may be a company you aspire to be like. Uh, and it's amazing who we know through the people we know. Um, that, that's, that's the only way to do it. Um, I'm currently doing a bit of work for an investor and 100% of the deals they've done, um, they were recommended through their network. So it's all, it's all about the network. It's all what about people. What business are you in? What's your business? Uh, I've got a photo booth company. Photo booth company. Did, did, yeah. well, did we speak in the pizza yeah. place? Yeah. Yeah. She sat on the table next to That's how it yeah. works. I still got your car <laughs> yeah. when we next to an event. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So same applies to the, that creative. So which, which business has got photo views everywhere and really winning? And it was really surprising if those companies, the media company, the photo view company, actually the ones that are winning, the ones that are you know, number one in the market, and if they haven't raised money from somebody, so who did they raise from? And then how do we get through to that? So just make that your, your mission. Okay, we've got, can I just add one quick thing? Yes, that, you can do it. Which is once you've <coughs> identified them, um, LinkedIn is a very good way to kind of get in contact with these people. Um, better than email sometimes. So, yeah. and, and, and what you're kind of alluding to is corporate venturing, which hasn't been very active to date, but I think it's starting to be. So um, uh, we'll see what happens. We've got a chance for one more question. I've got a bit of a situation where I've developed this uh, app and it's up and running and literally in the last couple of days I've just a major premiership football club have more or less given us the job nearly and it's like what you were talking about earlier Nick, which is like it's actually so big there's only as two of us you chaps have all been in this situation I'm sure and you mentioned about your credit card so I actually don't know what to do next I'm kind of going do, do we take the job do we what do we do I mean just these are all you know just as an opinion on that one I it's, it's, it's a terrifying, beautiful situation to be in, but it's massive, but I don't know what to do next. <laughs> Have you had that situation, Andy? Yeah. Um, oh, God, I don't know. Some of the best deals are the ones you walk away from. 
but we've jumped off so many times and if we hadn't jumped off we wouldn't have a business we've jumped off into terrifying situations I think you've kind of got to if I see you in a year's time and you punch me because I'm wrong I'd jump off jump off I'd jump off but I have the scars to prove it uh, I'd just jump off I'd just go and do it oh you mean go and do it I'd go and do the job yeah I'd do it. I'd see yeah, what but the element of, of, of having to have the money. Sorry, the problem. I didn't finish the question. I suppose was is, is the funding to take that. They're asking us to do things, which we just don't have the funding for to to put certain bits in place. Well, if, if there's two of you, and there's a large corporate entity that has a lot of cash, and they're asking you to do something non-commercial, don't do it. It's not your job to fund large businesses. If the deal's good, do the deal. If the deal's bad, don't do the deal. Well, the deal would be good. Do the deal then. So, so, so my, my, my bit, I think the two things, one is negotiate, and, and if they want you to do it, then ask for some help. Don't be afraid of asking for, for them for some help in terms of the cash flow, you know, the example I gave, to, to help you with that. The other thing is don't be afraid to work with your competitors and, and, and share the work. So we, asked that, for, we have a, I run a software business, which is SaaS, but we also have a film company. We ask for 70% upfront, 30 days out. And we don't shoot, and we don't go to shoot costs now unless we have the money in the bank. We used to. Can't run that business. Doesn't work. You want to do like agency work, making things. Get money up front. Get up front. Don't get stuck on sixty days. Right now. Best so, cash flow customers. Pay. So they, 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 there are two other points. I'm going to ask Tom a question about timing in a second. But Nick, you were going to go first. Yeah. Firstly, there's nothing like a customer. Right. <laughs> Um, to go all of this stuff about equity funding and, and crowdsource funding and grant funding and things like that, there's nothing quite like actually having a customer who pays you to do the thing that you do. Right? Then, then you're off and running. Um, but if they're a good customer and they really want the thing that you've got, then they, they, they ought to give you, you know, some reasonable terms and, uh, which, which don't match up your cash flow to, to, to get that deal. I guess one, one of the questions to ask is, is this then going to be the deal which you then go and show to all your su subsequent customers to go, look what we can do? Because if it is, and you can pull it off, then you're up and running. Because you, it opens the market to, to, um, to have some evidence that actually you can, you can deliver. And you can deliver something that further customers will want. So it, as long as it's not going to um, blow your bank balance uh, trying to deliver on this deal, which is, a, which is about how well you negotiate now, then yeah, it, it may be the thing that just gets you going. So then I'm going to ask Tom the, the final bit. Um, how quickly? Could you do a deal if he's got a blue chip customer? Yeah. And uh, or red chip, even whatever. Um, uh, how quickly could a deal be done? Uh, difficult question. How, how do you have any idea how much money you'd need to sort of fund fund this? Well, the uh, it's uh, we reckon that the to deliver what we're calling a super app would be about seventy thousand pounds. But obviously, once, it's del once we've done it for, for this team, then we, we, we can then resell that product because it's, it's ours, you know, way to all the other Premiership teams. We have a, a company, uh, a major sporting commercialization company, are already interested in what we've got. Um, so, yeah, in this case, 70,000. 70, okay. Just as, as a, okay, I'll, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a go and rest. But, um, so, it, on average, it takes us about three or four weeks from submission to getting a campaign onto the platform to raise, to raise the money. And then they have up to 60 days, but the average is closer to 30. Um, and then after that, it takes one to two weeks to, to get the funds. So on that basis, if you did it on, on an average, uh, on a sort of law of averages, um, so you've got about three weeks in the middle and then two at either end, so about, uh, about two months. Um, but if you push us, maybe you could do it faster. So that's not my thanks, Tom. I thought right. outside equity funding outside of that would take longer, yeah, and it would be three, three months, and it would be unpredictable. That's yeah. the risk. That's what you get from crowdfunding is a bit more predictability. Yeah. But I'd also just add that the majority fail. It's very hard work. <laughs> yeah. Um. Good. Glad you said that. Um, okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, panel. Um, I think we've heard uh, a lot of different perspectives. Uh, you've probably taken away, I hope you're going to take away, that it's complex. There's a lot of different sources of funding. Uh, it's a very changing environment, uh, both from the, you know, grant funding's changing, who knows what's going to happen after May. Um, a lot of, you know, government money um, in the air perhaps. Um, corporate venturing is changing, crowdfunding is maturing, 
um, you know, we're going to see a much more active angel network around Bristol and Bath, aren't we, Andy? Uh, in the in the short term, uh, so it's continually changing. So you have to keep your wits about you and keep an eye on what's going on. And the other big thing I think is people uh, get people around you formally or informally network, uh, and you will find out about the opportunities and get the support, the moral support and the technical support when you need it. Uh, so uh, I hope that was useful. Um, if you could join me in thanking our panel. <laughs>